I'd like to take you back a few weeks to the big sell-off in the North American markets that seem to kick off much of the volatility we've been seeing. When the markets open on August 24th, the markets immediately sold off, the Dow falling as much as 1,100 points in the first few minutes. The market was flooded with orders at the open, and many of them automated orders, which were triggered by the sell-off itself. Imagine the surprise of a few investors who had market trigger order types, which we'll talk about, to find out that they had sold out of their ETFs and a very deep discount, 20, 30, in some cases even 40 percent, to what the value of what that ETF really was. Let's take a look at this another way. Take a look at this chart. This is XFN, an ETF trading here in Canada. And it's an example of many ETFs are out there in the States and Canada, not just this one. And it's a financials ETF trading on the TSX. You'll see it opened at $21 at 9.30 a.m., then shot up to $27 by 10 a.m. So what happened? Here to give us an explanation of uh, things to look out for and what did happen. Peter Haynes is Managing Director of Index Products and Institutional Equities at TD Securities. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It was a long introduction, but I want to give people the context because if they were caught up in that one ETF that we just saw that sold off and had a, a market order, it would have sold off. What happened? Why does this even happen in the, in, in the ETF market? Well, ETFs are 25 years. <clears throat> excuse me. ETFs are 25 years old, and the evolution of the ETF product has been, in my career, the greatest financial evolution or product launch that I've seen. It's been the democratization for many it's people. It's democratized many asset classes for the individual investor. It's been a great tool for the institutional community as well. But that said, there are certain circumstances, particularly around market crises, where investors have to understand a little bit more about exactly how the process around valuation of ETFs work. Right. And there's lots of people out there that can help them in that regard. But in the example that you used in the introduction, the XFN, or the iShares uh, Financials ETF, is made up of large cap Canadian banks and insurance companies. Right. These are supposed to be the most liquid securities in Canada. And on the day you mentioned, the value of those securities, which should be reflected in the ETF, was much lower than it should have been on the open. And right. as you say, it was in part due to the fact that there were clearly some investors that had used what are called market orders to execute sell orders on the ETF using the opening. And at that point in time, with the stock market as uncertain as it was uh, and markets moving lower, there was a disconnect between the natural pricing between the underlying securities and the ETF. So in just in, in, in basic parlance yeah. for me, so basically what you have an ETF should reflect the value of the underlying securities in it. If one, if the ETF starts trading before or before there's information about those underlying securities, is that when that disconnect happens? We should have a very good idea of the value of the underlying securities and right. that they are the largest exactly. names in Canada. These are liquid names you talked about. In the case of the August 24th opening, it was a very stressful time in the market. As you yeah. mentioned, the Dow Jones was down as much as 1,100 points at 9.30. Canadian market was naturally falling suit. And it was very difficult for people to figure out exactly where the markets were at that point in time. And so one of the difficulties when you enter a market order at the open, which is entered sometime in this case probably over the weekend, is that that order needs to be executed at the very first trade for the ETF. And as you say, in many cases, it occurred before market participants had a good sense of exactly what the underlying values of the securities that make up the index backing the ETF. Let me back up for one second, because when I say market order, I just want to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about. So, so when someone is a retail investor and they're managing their investments themselves, they have put some sort of trigger and say, saying, at the open, just sell this right away. Just, just get it, you know, or sell some portion of it. And if it's a market order, meaning sell it at any price that the market is willing to, to have it sold at. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And one of the concerns market participants have had since the flash crash in 2010 is that sometimes those market orders executed during times of stress can be done when there are no offsetting orders anywhere in the market. Yeah. And so our regulators, both here in Canada and the United States, have put many safeguards in place to avoid that from happening and again in the future. The difficulty is when we're talking about trades that occur right at the open, some of those safeguards aren't in effect at that point during the trading day. Yeah. And in this particular instance, as you mentioned, I believe it was approximately 30,000 shares of the XFN ETF. And by the way, we're in no way picking on that particular no, ETF. it's representative. And there are many others in yeah. North America that, that had similar uh, instances around the open. 
in that case, you had 30,000 shares of this ETF that needed to be sold at the very first trade of the day on the open. Yeah. And quite honestly, the natural participants that would normally be on the other side of that, known as ETF market makers, yeah. they weren't prepared at that point in time, given everything going on in the market, to be yeah. able to provide offsetting orders to those market orders. And as a result, uh, the unit was able to disconnect from its underlying value as extremely as your chart showed initially. So I would also think too, again, I'm somebody who's sitting and managing my portfolio. If I had a stop of some sort in a portfolio saying sell this at, um, you know, 24, um, and it could have been triggered by this. I sold at 21, five minutes later, bounced up to 27, and I'm left going, what? What just happened? I got sold out of my position, and I didn't want that to happen. And this was kind of an artificial move. I, I use the word artificial, but it's, it's a mechanics. What is the, the lesson that people can take from this? I'm sure the regulators and, 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 and the, the markets themselves are trying to figure this out. But as someone who's trying to protect their own investments, I guess, is it just like take out market orders, take out you know, these, these stops, those kinds of things to protect yourself from these, these huge moves in the market? I would agree 100% that investors have to be extremely careful using market orders. Yeah, because with you ETFs. Can, yeah. Uh, pretty yeah. much in, in any circumstance, I would be concerned about using a market order in that using a limit order where you give your broker instructions to buy or sell a security at a price that you're willing to do it at right. without just saying at any price, yeah. you have now have control. Right. The concern an investor will have if they put in a limit order on their order is that it won't get executed. And right. next thing you know, the markets will, in fact, be down a thousand points like they were on the open, and they'll stay there because yeah. we're in a new paradigm. Right. And in that instance, they don't get their sell order done, and they've missed their opportunity to sell. So I really think it's important that investors utilize the tools they have. I would, in the case of exchange traded funds, I would in in encourage investors to speak to the ETF providers. Yeah. There's lots of educational tools on their websites. There's lots of educational tools on the websites at TD Waterhouse and other organizations on the street. Utilize those tools to understand a little bit more about how the product works. Uh, call your brokers, make sure your brokers understand them too. And I think those two going together, along with the fact that I think our, our regulators, you're right, we will learn definitely going forward to make sure that these types of events are limited in the future. Fantastic information. Thanks for coming on, Peter. No problem, thanks. Peter Haynes, Managing Director of Index Products and Institutional Equities at TD Securities. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Pleasure to have you with us. Again, a reminder, if you want someone to look at your portfolio or if you have some planning questions, email me at moneytalk at bnn.ca. I'll get you in touch with someone who can answer those questions for you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again next week. The preceding paid commercial program was brought to you by TD Well. TD Well.